Okay, so let's go ahead and focus in on the numerator here. And we have the th uh, 3 times the square root of 20 plus 7 times the square root of 5. Well, here's the thing. We would like to uh, add these two expressions, but we cannot add these expressions the way they are. Matter of fact, when you're dealing with square roots and radicals, you can only add things that have the exact same radicals. So, for example, if I had 3 radicals 7, and I want to add that to, uh, let me use a different number here, uh, 5 radical 7. Well, I can add these two because these uh, these both these expressions here have a radical 7. It's very much, matter of fact, it's almost exactly like like terms in algebra. So what we're going to do here is add the numbers in front of the square roots of 7. So this is going to be 8 square root of 7. So you can kind of think of uh, this in terms of when you're adding or you want to add or subtract square roots or radicals, you have to look at these things right here, the radicals, and they have to be exactly the same, very much like or exactly like uh, adding um, square or adding like terms, excuse me, in algebra. So if I have 3x and 11x, I can add these. This is 14x because we have an x here and an x here. But if I had an x squared right here, and now this is 11x. Well, these are not like terms, so I cannot add the coefficients. So that's what you want to be looking for is saying, okay, well, I can't, uh, you know, you might be saying, well, I can't add these right here because this is a 20 and this is a 5. So, well, you know, I might as well just skip this part. There's no hope in adding these two radical expressions. Well, not so quick because what we need to do here is simplify, fully simplify any radical. So what we got to do is focus in on this square root of 20. Again, a lot of multiple skills involved here. And let's go ahead and simplify this square root of 20. Now, again, this is something that hopefully you learn. And if you haven't learned how to do this, the idea is to uh, look for uh, what we call perfect square factors. Let me kind of, you can kind of see I have the word here, but let me kind of break this out a little bit further. So the square root of 20 we can break up uh, this expression, or we can write this expression by breaking up this number into factors. So I can be like, well, the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of t uh, 2 times 10. And these are factors of 20, but no, those factors are not that exciting. What I'm looking for is something called perfect square factors. Things like um, these numbers right here, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. I'm looking to see if a number underneath the square root has any of these numbers as factors. Now, of course, 20 we can write as a square root of 4 times 5. Now, I want these type of numbers, these perfect squares, because I could take the square root of these numbers without the aid of a calculator and look right there. The square root of 4 is 2. So that is going to be really uh, the, the secret to simplifying uh, square roots of radicals is seeing if you can detect any perfect square uh, radical or perfect square factors, excuse me. But we're not done yet because there's another uh, principle and you can kind of see it in action right here. So the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of four times five, okay? But this big radical, this big square root over these two numbers, four and five, we can break this up into their own individual square roots. So this is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Now, this really is the secret because uh, the square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times the square root of 5 is the same thing as the square root of 20. So when you look at a square root of radical, you always have to ask yourself, is this thing fully simplified? If it is, If it's not, you need to fully simplify because when we do this, you'll see there's an opportunity to actually add these two expressions. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward. So here we have 3 times the square root of 4 times 5, which of course is the same thing as a 3 times the square root of 20. Now I could break up this square root of 4 times 5 into their own individual square roots. And now I have 3 times the square root of 4. The square root of 4, of course, is 2. And we're only talking about the principal square root, the positive version of that. So 3 times the square root of 4 is the same thing as 3 times 2. And, of course, that's going to be in front of this square root of 5. And this is all multiplication here. So 3 times 2 is 6. And we have 6 square root of 5. And this 7 square root of 5, we're just going to carry this down. And we are trying to add these two square roots. And we can because we now are dealing with two square roots of 5. So to add them, we're simply going to add the numbers in front of the square roots of 5. So 6 and 7 is 13. So all this is equal to 13 square root of 5. 
Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Again, you know, what I'm doing here is just reviewing the skills, you know, necessary to solve this problem. This isn't uh, uh, kind of, um, you know, a substitute for a complete full lesson. Matter of fact, I'll just tell you right now, if you are studying this in some sort of math course and you want my best full instruction on this, a couple of quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But the best uh, suggestion I have for you is to check out like my full Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. You can find links to those in, uh, in the description below. Okay, so here we focused in on the numerator and we have three square root of 20 plus uh, seven square root of five. We did all this work and it all came out to be equal to 13 square root of five. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, focus our attention on the denominator. So now we have the square root of two times the square root of three. So this operation is addition. This operation right here is multiplication. So how do we multiply square roots and radicals? Well, this is entirely different than adding and subtracting. When we multiply square roots and radicals, all we have to do is basically, first of all, we can't do this, all right? We can't have the square root of seven, or sorry, the cube root of seven, and, and multiply that by the square root of seven. Okay, you cannot do that, all right? Now, if I have the square root of seven, and I wanna multiply that by the, by the square root of seven, I can do that because both of these are square roots. This is a cube root. You can't multiply a cube root by a square root. So the roots have to be the same. So in other words, if I have the fifth root of seven, I can multiply that by the fifth root of three. And the way I do that is effectively what I'm doing right here because I have the square root of two times the square root of three. Uh, these again are like two factors of one number, which would be six. So I can write um, this under one big square root. So this is equal to the square root of two times three. Okay, it's basically the reverse of what we were doing um, in the previous step. So the square root of two times three is equal to, of course, the square root of six. So that's the main idea here, is that when you're multiplying square roots and radicals, if they have the same uh, uh, root, then you can actually multiply. All right, so hopefully all this stuff makes sense. Now, if you uh, got to this part of the problem and he says, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I did all this work, here is my answer. Well, I would have to give you maybe like a seven out of 10. Now, a lot of you might be saying, what are you talking about seven out of 10? I did everything right. Uh, we added those expressions in the uh, numerator and I did all this multiplication right here. Well, this is not right. Okay, so <laughs> another uh, step that we have to address. Uh, we cannot leave the problem like this. And of course, I'll explain this in just one second. But first, I'm gonna ask you to quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't stop this lovely math video if it wasn't that important for me to ask for your support. I need to continue to uh, grow my channel. Uh, I've been on YouTube for well over 10 years, have a couple thousand plus videos, but, but uh, my you know passion to do these videos, you know, pretty much daily, is to reach as many people as I can. Now, I do have a pretty good reach and I'm definitely grateful for that, but uh, there is a lot more people that I can be helping. And the only way I can reach those people is if uh, the YouTube algorithm says, hey, you know what, people don't really mind listening to this guy too much, although he rambles from time to time. You know what, I'll help him out. So all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well hit that notification button as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go uh, back to this problem. And what is the issue? Well, we have a square root in the denominator, but not any square root. So if I have 13 square root of five, okay, so here is our numerator, and I have the square root of 25 in uh, the denominator, uh, this is uh, not a problem. Now, why is this not a problem? And this is because the square root of 25 is equal to five, okay? That is a lovely number that we can simplify. It's not an irrational number. And this number right here is what we call an irrational number. If you go into the, your calculator and you take the square root of six, you're gonna get a decimal, okay, that doesn't uh, terminate and it doesn't repeat, okay? It's gonna go on and on in infinity. So you can never divide anything by a number that doesn't really kind of uh, make sense in terms of you know an actual value, okay? We can't really write out this entire value because you're dealing with a number, uh, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So this is an issue and this is a big deal 
when you study square roots and radicals, we have to address it. Okay, we cannot um, leave an irrational number in the denominator. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to do this right down here. Okay, this is called rationalizing the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire thing and we're going to multiply it by, well, let me get my right uh, pin here. We're going to multiply this entire thing by 1. Okay, now if I take any number, let's say 12, and I multiply it by 1, uh, what's the answer? It's just 12. If I take x and I multiply it by 1, what's the answer? It's just x. This is what we call the multiplicative uh, identity. But here, we're going to be a little bit um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, resourceful, and we're going to be using an interesting 1, okay? We're going to use this one right here. Okay, so the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 6 is what? Well, anything divided by itself is 1. So we're going to multiply this entire thing by 1, but not this one. We're going to multiply it by this one. Okay, this is the way I kind of like to teach this. Now, a lot of um, students will be like, okay, whatever this is down here, I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by this. And that is, of course, the correct step. But really, you know, you have to understand that you're not breaking the problem. We're just multiplying by one. If you can kind of recognize that, then uh, this will all make sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the multiplication. Hopefully you remember now how to multiply because I just covered how to do that. But let's go ahead and see the result of doing this. So the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 36 now, which, of course, is 6. That is now in our denominator. And now I have 13 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 6. So I can just put this under 13 or put this as 13 times the square root of 5 times 6, which, of course, is 30. Now, when I'm looking at this square root of 30, I need to ask myself, are there any um, perfect square factors in 30? Now, this is prime. If I look at these numbers here, I have 5, the square root of 5. And then the here, I have the square root of 6, which is, of course, 2 times 3. So can I come up with any perfect square factors, i.e. 4, 9, uh, 16, 25 from these numbers? Nope. So this is all done. Okay. In other words, if we had a situation right here, like this, is, this was the square root of, of uh, 40, this I can write as the square root of 4 times 10. And, of course, the square root of 4, I can break this out as square root of 4 times the square root of 10 because it's uh, 4 is a perfect square factor. So, you know, these problems, you know, you really have to be methodical and always be evaluating, hey, is there any more to do? And that's why I say a lot of people get these problems wrong because they do a lot of good work, but they stop, you know, at a point where, you know, they're just not done.